Wake up, babe. Poker 2 just dropped. Now, this is Bellatro. A dopamine dripping, sleep depriving, future Hall of Fame deck builder so good it ought to be illegal. Well, it is illegal in some countries, but more on that later. First, a two hour impression, the refund window consideration, and then the full reviewing. This game's available on PC, Xbox, Switch, and PlayStation for $14.99 wherever it hasn't been outlawed. I spend the first 15 minutes reading Poker for Dummies. There is a tutorial in this game, but since I played the demo, I didn't get it this time around. I'm pretty good at the lying part, but I forget the vernacular and the scoring system. And there's no one here to lie to as it is purely single player. Thankfully, I don't need to know Rivers, Flops, or Wild Bill Hickox, and the game has a handy chart with the card combos laid out. Seems simple enough. I win by playing the strongest cards to beat the score on the top left. I have multiple turns to do so, and if I don't like the cards in my hand, I can discard up to five of them to get new ones. Winning gives me money, but I get an extra dollar for my leftover turns. It's in the shop where I get the feeling we're not in Vegas anymore. I can buy extra playing cards. A planet card to boost my flush hands. A joker card which grants a bonus for having less than the standard 52 card deck. I see your game. If the house always wins, I'm gonna need a few performance enhancers to even the odds. I'm not sure how important money is yet, so I buy a cheap booster pack. Inside's a joker that gives me more chips for playing face cards. Next round, I dig deep for a full house that scorches the score. In the shop once more, I buy a voucher that gives me 25% off all future purchases to discount a joker to boost any hand with a three of a kind. This is starting to sound like Yu-Gi-Oh. Boss fights in a poker game. Now I've seen it all. The target score continues to grow, and this time comes with the caveat all heart cards are debuffed. That's the gauntlet Bellatra was running. There's eight stages. Each stage is made up of two normal fights and a boss battle that plays dirty. San Quentin prison rules, eh? Seems the real juice is in these here spectral packs anyways. At the cost of drawing one less card per turn, I convert all the cards on screen to the same rank. Or as I like to call it, oops all nines. Let's see how you handle a five of a kind. And again. And again. Let's boost it for good measure. Where I come from, someone would have gifted me a pair of concrete boots already. But it seems all's fair in Love, War, and Bellatro. And would you believe that's still not enough? The target score keeps rising and I run out of gas in stage 6 out of 8. How much crazier does it have to get to beat this game? I dedicate a few rounds to scouting out the cards and mechanics. With a wider understanding of the insanity one can expect to come across, I use the last 15 minutes of my 2 hour window to try and win a run. Not this one. Or this one. This one smells promising. Really wish I knew how to count. Alright, down to 10 minutes, now I got time for one more. I skip straight to the first boss, who decreases my hand size by one, but I slap him with a four of a kind aces nonetheless. Skipping gives extra bonuses, you see. I use mine to accrue a nice pot of gold at the start and a free rummaging through the shop. I skip straight to the second boss for more cash and start to craft a flush deck. I pick up extra heart cards and convert spades to hearts to increase my likelihood of drawing the same suit. All I need now are the right jokers. Lil Peep gives two at the start of every fight if I have room, so I sell off the ones that aren't useful. I make it to the last stage only to look ahead and see the Violet Vessel boss waiting for me. My deck's full load pumps out 120,000 chips at best. I'm gonna need almost three times that to win. With only two fights to go before the boss, I refresh the shop more aggressively, trying to craft a stronger deck. Time's up. I fish for a flush. It barely makes a dent. The boss tanks another flush. I dig deeper in my remaining cards, but I got nothing, and I'm out of discards. Begrudgingly, I use one of my remaining two turns to throw out a crap hand so I can get more hearts. I get it, but will it be enough? Last hand, winner takes all. One joker boosts my heart cards. Steel cards left unplayed boost my hand. No discards left gives me another boost. Already playing a flush, that's another boost. The screen shakes as everything plays out. <sighs> I need a drink. Bellatro runs is short and sweet. You'll have played enough in two hours to see the core concept, but if you don't go out of your way to unlock the cards, you might not wade far enough into the deep end for the game to pull you under. Even then, I didn't commit to this video until I realized I logged 12 hours and two sleepless nights on our shared copy during my free time, and bought my own copy because I wanted to keep my progress and achievements. 
It's a slow burning obsession that lit itself inside me. I have over a hundred hours of playtime now. At this point, Bellatro deserves a mural on the side of my house. But I rent, so a review will have to do. The truth be told, I rolled my eyes at first when people put this game alongside Slay the Spire. Because I feel fans are too quick to announce the second coming of the Messiah in everything. The next Hollow Knight, the next Kobe, the next Chaco Taco. It's a coping mechanism to deal with the daunting gap left by the thing you once loved that others cannot come close to filling. But something must fill it during the interim lest we cave under the reality that happiness is fleeting and we should have enjoyed it while it was here instead of trying to pawn it off on the next poor game that dares exist in the same genre. Good news, Bellatro earns its spot and its name. In fact, it's my favorite roguelike deck builder because it is rooted in familiarity. If you've ever seen a pack of playing cards, then you already know every card that's in the starting deck. If you can lay down a poker hand, you're ahead of the learning curve. Might even get your grand back from the casino. The rest of your neural processes can focus on taking in all the shiny cards that push the mundane into outrageous. There's a half-ripped card that boosts your hand if you don't play more than three cards. A loyalty card that gives a four times multiplier every six turns. A credit card that lets you buy items even after you have no money. There's tarot cards, planet cards, spectral cards, card enhancers, hundreds of ways to concoct illegal decks that wouldn't fly in any casino or prison. I'm not making excuses for my low amount of wins or anything, but there's so much variety to this game that most of my time has been spent trying out the different decks, difficulties, and I haven't even started on the challenges yet. And this has always been my favorite kind of unlock system, this sort of side objective system. Earn 100 million chips in a single turn. Have at least 30 diamond cards in your hand. Discard five jacks at the same time. Ayo, burgers and fries. In my head, this better incentivizes a player to try out new things and achieve a secondary victory while they're still learning the game. I prefer it to the more common system nowadays where you play the game, earn a currency, and use that currency to unlock more of the game. Ah, a second job. Just what I needed to take my mind off my first job. And if unlocking in-game content is against your religion or you want all your game content available at time of purchase, there's a button in the profile menu that unlocks everything for you. Voiding achievements on just that one profile, of course. Ironic that Bellatro has the aesthetic of playing a virtual casino machine on LSD. And yet, this is as clean-cut as I'd like games to be. It didn't stop South Korea from banning this game due to it looking like there's gambling afoot. Noted. Look like gambling for kids? Bad. Real gambling for kids? Good. Bellatro has the width. Does it have the mechanical depth to belong on the Mount Rushmore of roguelike deck builders? How crazy can a playing card deck get? That is the question, my friend. Things have to get crazy if you intend on making it to the finish line, and to get there, you'll have to stack as many effects as possible. Add or remove cards with an utmost care to probability. Balance out risk versus reward. Even the order of operations matters for how you place your jokers at the top of the screen. With so many systems in play, you can go ages without crafting the same power fantasy, and it's not a runaway fantasy either, as you can keep testing the strength of your deck in endless mode and be humbled by seeing where it runs out of steam. If you're a regular old Northern Lion or Yorbs consistently laying the smackdown on card games, then the extra difficulties, decks, and challenges can crank up the spice to your liking. If you can't tell by my cool-headed monotony, I quite like Bellatro. Here I am playing a card game on thousands of dollars of equipment feeling like my grandma. I'm gonna tell my kids this was solitaire. And while Bellatro is pure gameplay, it's worth mentioning the gambling machine aesthetic, trippy visuals, and various references to cards and gestures feels as if I've fallen into a coma and I'm playing a round of no-holds-barred Texas Hold'em against the devil for my immortal soul. And even after I've won, I choose to stay here and play one more round. And one more round. And one more round. Suppose the house always wins after all. This video is sponsored by Winter Survival, available now on Steam via Early Access. What starts as a nice little hike with friends quickly turns into a fight for your life. If you want to live, you'll have to be mindful of the freezing temps, thirst, and hunger, as well as the surrounding wildlife. But try to keep a clear head, as the game's unique sanity system takes survival to the next level. Travel through snow-covered forests, dangerous mountains, and frozen lakes as you grapple with treacherous terrain, deadly animals, and harsh winter conditions. Find shelter, cook meals, and rest up, ready for the next day, which hopefully it won't be your last. Survival is dependent on the choices you make in the game. Uncover the mysteries of the land in story mode, risk your life in the ultimate survival experience of Cold Wave, or conquer the world around you in endless mode. Winter Survival is out now in early access, so head on over to the game's Steam page to start your survival story today.